All right. Welcome to Northern, our very own podcast. I'm Beatrice Deer. I'm from a very small town in Nunavik called Huaktak, but now living in Montreal. And um, I have here my beautiful guest host, Tanya Innagolik. Hi. Hi. Tanya is a designer, jeweler, painter, and illustrator from Kutjok Nunavik. Currently based in Montreal, Tanya focuses on innovating traditional Inuit designs and reinterpreting them to create clothing, scarves, and accessories. All around self made badass businesswoman. Oh. <laughs> and we also have Adam Leith Goldner. Adam is a Canadian writer and journalist who lives in Montreal. Happy to be here. Thank you so much for being here with us. So, um, yeah, let's uh, get this uh, conversation rolling. Shall we start uh, with uh, listening to a song? Let's do it. Why don't you introduce the song for us, B? All right. So the song is... Uh, off our latest record called Shifting. Yeah, thank you. Woo -hoo! <laughs> and it's called Free. It's in Inuktitut in and has a little bit of English. And I don't know, should I um, briefly translate the songs, uh, the lyrics? I would for love you? that. Okay. So the song starts off with. Um, it's it's talking to um, depression, um, suicide, and um, low self esteem, and uh, worry as if they were people, because they're they're like I see them as spirits, so I'm telling these spirits who have been plaguing me to let me go, set me free. Um, and then um, the song ends with um, me declaring that um, even though I've been broken, um, I'm going to get up. Even if I'm knocked down, I'm going to stand up. Even um, if I have scars, I'm no longer ashamed. Um, I'm going to choose to live because I'm a victor. So that's that's free. Beautiful. And how, how do you say free in Inuktitut? Um... It's a long word. Mm. Uh, it's called uh, "la set me free." Says um, "hilagut janga," and you're gonna hear that word. Um, yeah. <laughs> Powerful introduction. Powerful. Here I'm saying I'm I'm tired. I'm so tired. Hilagutjanga set me free. Because I want to live.
Beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Super important um, music for our times, for our people, uh, for the changes that we're going through. Um, support, um, inspiration, to be able to see that it can be done. Um, mm -hmm. So happy. Yeah. So happy for you. So happy <gasps> for the growth, so happy for the help that's going to be available. I mean, that, you know, that song will mm -hmm. bring the people. Mm -hmm. Thank Love. you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Where where, uh, where were you when you wrote that? Um, Physically or mentally, emotionally? Uh, both. <laughs> um, I was at home and um, I was... Um, going through, um, I guess, recovering from depression um, after my two nieces had taken their own life 10 months apart. They were sisters. And um, it was, uh, yeah, I, I've, I've, I've been suicidal in the past when I was younger. Um, and I've have, I have battled with depression, I think three times now, clinically. Um, and I've had to fight mentally and emotionally to live. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I wrote that song, um, coming out of that um I write my songs in my room by myself and um I wanted to declare declare that I am free from um sadness and uh, I mean it's it's okay to be sad but to be stuck in sadness to be consumed by sadness and um depression and shame um and i wanted to declare that like they're going to set me free like set leave me alone you are no longer binding me so that's a, a song declaring that and and declaring um no matter what i've no matter what pain i lived through I, they will no longer determine how I live my life. So choosing to be free from that. A big part of that, I think what I see in you is that through this journey, you picked up all these tools to help you. You know, you're able to identify things that are not good for you. And mm -hmm. so it's like you have this, this, um, life tool belt with you now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I really agree with that. Yeah. Because when I was young, mm. I didn't have any tools whatsoever. I didn't know how to cope. Um, the only method coping me mechanism that I had was to drink. Um, yeah. And use um that as an excuse to stay in pain yeah mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. and pity myself mm -hmm. and blame. and yeah blame blame mm -hmm. my victimizers and circumstances and um emotional growth and like with a lot of therapy and counseling and 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 putting yourself first i noticed mm -hmm. that uh, that's a big one for you yeah that, or making you know loving yourself yeah i i try to like when i know that things are maybe not easy for me or that i'm feeling a bit weak i always think you gotta be like beatrice she puts she cares about herself 
she puts herself first. <laughs> but it's you know it's a healthy trait. Mm-hmm. Taking yeah, care of your body, mind, soul, and not draining yourself yeah. with other people's yeah and problems. Yeah, because we didn't learn that Mm-mm. growing up. Um, I've learned to put boundaries, mm-hmm. clear boundaries. That's in your life tool belt. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Because, uh, yeah, that too takes a lot of practice. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's very uncomfortable trying to put new boundaries, Mm -hmm. um, because you don't want to hurt people's feelings. Mm -hmm. Um, you don't want to seem selfish, but, um, it's very healthy to have boundaries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, my, my girlfriend has, a. An expression she uses, I think it's the name of something, but it's boundaries are not bitchy. Mm. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Yeah. Because I always feel like, yeah, am I being mean mm-hmm. or unkind? And yeah, I don't want to be mean or unkind. Boundaries are not bitchy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We are allowed to establish line. it. Love yes. that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to use that too mm-hmm. as a motto. Tattoo. I want to I want to ask you about something else in this tool belt uh-huh. that relates to the song we just heard. Uh-huh. You talked about kind of personifying the spirits that mm-hmm. you are trying to banish depression and grief and I I just wonder like do you actually imagine them as entities or do you how did yeah. that work? Yeah. Yeah. Um see I grew up in a Christian home. My parents are pastors. And um, in the Bible, um, the Bible talks a lot about um, bad spirits, like evil spirits, how how um, the devil has um, demons. And these demons are different demons with different hierarchy. Some are higher and some are just servants and slaves. And... These demons have different strengths and different um, abilities. And um, so I grew up hearing about these. So, um, yeah, they can take a hold of us. um, And they can come in through different traumatic experiences. Um, for example, um, suicidal thoughts, they, they come through, um, different experiences of trauma, for example, like sexual abuse. Um, so yeah, that's how, that's how I grew up hearing about evil spirits and that's how I'm, that's what I'm saying about the um, in this song. It also really meshes with like um, Inuit culture mm-hmm. and myths and yeah, scary demons. So like when you have, you know, religion and Inuit um, culture kind of talking about this two of the same things, like <clears throat> it's what you picture. Um, it's what you translate these feelings too it's kind of just what makes sense you know so like i don't know it's true though the little people myth yeah yeah yes yes it just makes sense it just that's how the puzzle fits together like maybe in other parts of the world um these bad feelings and stuff might translate different but yeah. for us that makes sense yeah mm-hmm. like um i think uh being um inuit um we're naturally very spiritual people and um and other indigenous cultures um other ethnic cultures also are very spiritual um so i think we're very sensitive mm-hmm. to that topic 
I mean, there's one of the things I could be mistaken, but one of the things I remember learning when I went to the North was that part of the way the spirituality manifests there is in the idea that there are spirits in, in everything. Mm -hmm. Is that, is that, am I remembering that correctly? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so before, um, before missionaries came to our lands, Inuit, um, were a spiritual people with, uh, shamans and, um, we, our values, our core values are respecting all living things. Um, including the land. So um, it's still um, a core value to this day. Um, we have to respect all all animals um, and show gratitude because we are alive because of them, because of the animals, because of the land that provides for us. Um, so... We're told not to take anything for granted. Very interesting. I know that we're going to be getting into the question of eating animals and wild animals and country food. Mm -hmm. But we were just talking about a place called Torngat, Torngat mm -hmm. Mountains, mm -hmm. which means the place of spirits at the very north of Labrador. Mm -hmm. And... We were talking about how on the land, something that Southerners are, like myself, are amazed by is Northerners' ability to see things on the land. Yeah, animals. Yeah. Yeah, animals are naturally, um, they camouflage, they blend in with the environment, but Inuit are, are very good at seeing them. Um, if you've had have a bit of experience um, going on the land with uh, hunters, they'll spot animals even before. I mean, w where you can't even see them. You can't see them. I, mm -hmm. We would we were on a boat going pretty fast, a speedboat through the waters, and one of the guides would say, "You know, there's a polar bear, Nanook," mm -hmm. and myself and the other Canadian boys from from St. John's in Toronto would say uh where you know and and, and Yako or whoever Paul would say there and would point and make sure we could look and <laughs> you, we could not see it for, even when they're pointing at it <laughs> yeah for like five more minutes of going at 50 kilometers mm -hmm. an hour only only then you would be like oh there it is that uh -huh. tiny dot the, yeah they could see it's them. very subtle yeah it's <laughs> it's in our wrong animal <laughs> <laughs> it's in but our also DNA. you have to think they've been on those waters so many times you know you things become um you become used to seeing things in certain areas you you can almost kind of predict animals a little, I guess, and where they might be. So they know what to look for. They know what kind of ripples to look for in yeah. the water. Yeah, exactly. It's all uh, something you learn. Yeah. Yeah, just even surviving, surviving the cold. I mean, you know, imagine trying to take anybody from the south and just plop them in the north, you know. Um, there's so much knowledge in there, uh, how to survive and... Like, I had an uncle um, many years ago. He was hunting, and um, his his skidoo fell through the ice. And he had been hunting ptarmigan, which are little, small, little white birds. They're kind of like the same size as pigeons. And while the ice was breaking, he ended up getting all wet, and it was you know freezing and he had nothing his bag fell uh his snowmobile fell he had to walk but what he did have was this um sack of ptarmigan that he had hunted earlier so he started plucking them and he stuffed all the feathers mm -hmm. and the down into his wet uh 
snow pants and parka and really that's what saved him wow while he walked uh across the ice back home Mm -hmm. so you know like scary there's so much knowledge so Mm -hmm. much uh and so much even if you don't have the knowledge you have this uh ability to um wing it you know yeah in this case literally yeah 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 Yeah. you know you have uh you have like this this uh database of um information that you can use to um accommodate whatever problem you're in you know yeah totally Mm. yeah that's uh survival there's so many incredible survival stories mm-hmm. from from the Arctic. It's incredible. Um, yeah, they're so loud. Mm-hmm. I'm very distracted. <laughs> and right the door's now. open. Yeah, which is we're just being oh. divas. <laughs> I'm cold. They won't be uh, picked up on the mic. No, it won't <coughs> be. No. Okay. No, you're, you're clear. <coughs> So let's maybe tell us about the stars you were talking about. How was it? Is it navigating using the stars? Yeah, there's uh, navigation uh, using stars. Um, yeah, because um, with uh, blizzards and um, like being out on the land. Um, there were no, obviously, no GPS and no technology um, hundreds of years ago. So um, everybody learned, was taught to use um, the stars, the snow. um, The wind. Yeah, the wind, study the landscape um, to orient themselves on the land. And... um, These practices are still used today. Yeah, so Inuit are naturally very good at um, placing themselves mm-hmm. and remembering um, what to do, where to go. As children, we were always told um, when we go out hunting, always, always look at the land and study the land and pay attention to um, odd landmarks, like uh, whether if it's a big stone or a a weird looking formation, um, anything. And is that something that in your experience, when you see Inuit coming to the city, does the, the way that you find your way or situate yourselves, does that change? Their inner compass? Does it still work work down here? I think so. I think so. Yeah, Mm -hmm. because um, last week I was, we were at the Northern Lights trade show uh, in Ottawa and um, I was invited to perform at the Arctic Inspiration Prize. And there was a a young man, he's 23. um, His name is Yuliusi. And it was his second time in the city, in his life. And um, I'm a bit of a, I don't really pay attention um, where I'm going, where I'm parking. Um, I don't like look at street names um, very much. (laughs) But um, as a group, we were collaborating. So we were always together. We stayed at the same hotel and we were walking to the National Arts Center together for rehearsals and he he was like it's his second time in the city but he knew exactly where to go Mm -hmm. um as we were walking back to our hotel whereas I wasn't paying attention but he he paid attention Mm -hmm. he's always on the land he's a he's a he's an avid hunter so so these Remembering landmarks, remembering odd things. Yeah. He just does it. It just comes, yeah, it comes naturally (coughs) for him because he's so used to that. Mm -hmm. So he probably like remembered, oh, here's a Tim Hortons there. (laughs) Yeah. There's a cat lady there. (laughs) 
<laughs> crazy cat lady, huh? <laughs> subtle. Do we, do, we, subtle. do we know any of those? No. <laughs> I don't. Beatrice? Uh, yeah, I kind of know of one. Heard of one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Side eye. <laughs> Michael Pickle is a crazy cat lady. <laughs> <laughs> mm. you pregnant cravings. <laughs> pregnant cravings. <laughs> <laughs> no, we were talking about pregnant cravings earlier. Not because anybody's pregnant. No, mm. no. None of us are. <laughs> Knock on Not wood. Anyway. Not that we're yeah. aware of. Chris. <laughs> Knock on wood, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about um, superstitions. Speaking of pregnancy, um, Adam, would you like to hear of uh, Inuit superstitions? I would love it. Okay, so um, so these are um, stuff that um, we were told um, growing up. Yeah, growing up. Some of them are so strange. Like yeah. me and Beatrice were discussing them, and we were like. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. If we yeah. yeah, so but it is what it is. Yeah, so um, a pregnant woman is never supposed to stand in a doorway for long periods of time um, because um, she'll have a very long labor. Move That's, through the doorway yeah. promptly. Yes. Efficiently. Mm-hmm. Yes. Just it's like a portal, I guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, like the child is also moves mm-hmm. through a doorway, through yeah. a passage. And if a woman is having a very long labor, whoever is there accompanying her runs in and out through the doorway many times to help the baby come out faster. Oh, mm-hmm. to sort of create the idea, send the signal yeah. to this new life form mm-hmm. that what you want to yeah. do is pass like through the follow doorway. Me. Yeah. yeah, follow me. Come on, come through the yeah. door. Yeah, yeah. And then there's a lot of like do's and don'ts. Like, um, pregnant women are not supposed to uh, crochet or knit mm-hmm. anything because they say that um, the baby's umbilical cord might get wrapped around. Uh, the baby's neck mm-hmm. while they're crocheting. It's interesting because isn't there a a, a string game that is important? Well, there are culture? string. Yeah, there's a mm-hmm. string game um, called ayagak. Um, but that wouldn't be um, knitting or crocheting. Yeah, that wouldn't. Be, yeah. yeah, making anything. Yeah, there's so <coughs> many. And um, here's another one that's I find outrageous. But uh, um, mind you, I I don't believe in these mm-hmm, personally. Mm-hmm. But and we can p- we, now that we're older and wiser, <laughs> we see where they come from. Yeah, we see where these um, myths, why they were made, and mm-hmm. who made them. Where where do they come from? <clears throat> well, Beatrice, tell your your next myth first, and then, yeah, because it might be apply to where they came from. Yeah. So if you're pregnant, you, mm-hmm. first of all, um, don't be lazy. Mm-hmm. Don't ever be lazy. Um, don't spend your day um, lying down when you're pregnant. Always move. Always be on the move. <laughs> and um, clean all the time using water. Mop the floors. Do the dishes. Do laundry. Wash with water. Mm-hmm. And if you don't, your baby's going to come out all lardy. Lardy? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, the baby's, I don't know the scientific term, the medical After term. Birth. Is it? Um, when the baby comes out, um, they're covered in this substance that yes. protects the skin. Mm-hmm. But in superstition, they saw it as a bad thing. Mm-hmm. Are we talking about the um, the amniotic mm-hmm. fluid mm-hmm. that is in the the No, the the baby is covered in this um waxy lardy you know when white baby's born substance. Yum. Yum. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Pregnant cravings. <laughs> 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 I'm tired. 
<laughs> um, so they the the superstition is is that 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 waxy substance will be particularly lardy, mm-hmm. yeah, or that like, the baby itself will be like a fatty. No, mm-hmm. no, the, the the coating. Yeah, the coating will be, but then it would it it would signify that you were a lazy pregnant woman. Oh. Yeah. Oh. And laziness <clears throat> was unacceptable. But in, you see where these myths or uh, these, uh, what was the word? Superstitions. Superstitions. They came from, you know, like it's from, you know, bossy husband. I was going to say, it sounds like, <laughs> sa- this sounds like men. This sounds like something yeah. men would make up. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Patriarchy. You know, that wanted their house cleaned all the time and the poor woman got tired. So then they invented this superstition yeah, always so be yeah. washing always mm-hmm. wash and don't always lie clean. down when mm-hmm. preg- oh my god did i ever lie down mm-hmm. like there was that the most time i spent on a bed was my last pregnancy i slept so much good how how lardy was your baby, baby. Uh, <laughs> I'm lardy. Mm, me Stop me Stop me lardy. um she was not that lardy. <laughs> if you had to compare, I did a it lot of renovation though. <laughs> <laughs> Just change the color. Okay. Uh, um, more or less. She wasn't that. She was that perfect. Much. Yeah, she was perfect. She is Aww. perfect. Yeah, she didn't cry for twelve hours, and she was so little. Yeah, she was tiny. Anyway, she's so cute. Drives me nuts. You cute. Yeah. And um, coming back to superstitions, another one is when you're doing dishes, don't use your fingernails to scrape off the the stuck on foods or else your baby um, is going to be someone who's who scratches other kids. What? Mm-hmm. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Jeremy, I mean, you no. reacted so I, much. I, do, I use my nails so much. <laughs> I, <laughs> like, it, oh. it must have been a person who, uh, that irked them yeah. or something. So they, they, they created <laughs> this whole superstition. Made it up. <laughs> but we're very small people, you know? So, like, everything travels. So it just became a big superstition. Yeah. What about with the, uh, there's some superstitions around the Northern Lights, no? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, there is. Those are cool ones. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Northern Lights, um, they used to say to children, when you see Northern Lights, run home or you'll be decapitated. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Man, and um, don't I used to run home. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. It's not and a little bit dangerous. It still freaks me out, like the and dark. Yeah, this <coughs> this zipper, mm-hmm. this aggravates northern lights. You do not want to. So you do not want to do that when the northern lights are out. And you know what we used to do when we were really close to our house door? That's what, and then run yeah. in the house really fast. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Brats. <laughs> <laughs> Playing with fire. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And what about um is there something about whistle you need to whistle? Whistle or whistle. whistle. Yeah. Whistling also um it makes them d- that uh, it's uh, yeah, it's like calling them. Yeah, so calling you're also them. also playing with fire. But calling the northern lights what would the northern lights do to us besides decapitate us? That, that's well, all. what else could they do? I don't know. <laughs> so that's they the do, worst. They don't the do worst. anything else. <laughs> that's what they do. Yeah, that's mm. what they do. Take your head off. But your body. again, you can see where this came from. It was a way for parents or mm-hmm. uh, grandparents to have some sort of structure without having clocks and watches and, mm-hmm. you know, like to say, okay. If the kids are out, this is a good time for them to get home or to come in. Um, so it was, you know, they instilled this fear in us so that they didn't have to worry about us being outside. Yeah. At is, night. Is there, um, <clears throat> are there like, uh, like mythological horror stories that come from uh, the Inuit? In- in- like Inuit. Inuit legends, mm-hmm. yeah, 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 all of Tons. all of the Inuit legends are all scary. Mm-hmm. They're dark and scary. Like none of them are 
mushy gushy. Sweet. No, we should we I should like talk that. about a <clears throat> an Inuit legend um, on one of the episodes. Yeah, because um, there are a lot. There are a lot. All of them are are dark and scary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mm. And there's also this uh, scary one um, that we were told as children, don't go in other people's belongings. Don't look through them and don't steal. If you steal and if you're like looking for something to steal, you're going to see a, a three finger hand that's very hairy. I don't want to see that. <laughs> <laughs> or like keep your feet covered at night. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> or like a scary old woman would be at the end of your blanket covering your feet. <laughs> no wonder we're traumatized. Oh my God. I keep imagining her covering your feet with like fur. Or like three, hairy, or three hairy fingers. feet. You had three, yeah. the hairy three fingers. Yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> what do I need to do? Wash? What do I need to clean up? Yeah. <laughs> clean up. Don't knit. <laughs> do dishes really fast. Cover your feet and don't play with your zipper and, and go home whistle. before dark. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of laws. I thought we were yeah. supposed to be free. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So. You learned a lot, hey? I, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely. <laughs> I think those, um, what's the word again? Superstitions. Superstitions. I think <clears throat> they're a lot. <laughs> they're not as strong as they used to be when we were yeah. young. Yeah, like, that's true. I think it was, we were kind of the cutoff, uh, or I guess adults became more aware of like mental damage and, uh, you know, saying yeah. these kind of things to kids but we certainly were got the tail end of all that uh um emotional damage oh yeah, my god yeah. yeah you know what i'd love to ask you about is a little bit about colors how colors are seen Ooh. or thought of because you have this incredible yeah but it's so not you know i mean uh, you know my hair Super. I got it from the pharmacy. <laughs> I love the color. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know colors. Uh, are colors. Um, I I learned recently. Um, when I was making my traditional contemporary contemporary um woman's outfit called an arnauti, I deliberately chose the Hudson's Bay colors because they are the colonizers' colors. <clears throat> Hudson Hudson's Bay I were colonizers. We that. Mm -hmm. oh, it's I think I sent it. I sent it to Mike. I have it yet. Yeah. So you'll you can mm -hmm. pull it up. So Adam can see. It is incredible. And our viewers can see. It's such <clears> a moving, <throat> um moving, meaningful, deep piece. Thank to you. reclaim those those colonizers' hues. Yeah. So um, when Hudson's Bay had their trading posts, they only sold those colors. Primary colors. Yeah, yeah the ivory, um, indigo red. blue, red, yellow, and green. Mm -hmm. So everybody had those colors. Yeah. So that's oh. what I made. This is the beaded um, chest piece. The, the crown. <clears throat> yeah. It's an applique. <clears throat> and I Isn't embroidered those boxes. Um, the whale tail is like a symbol for how the whalers almost wiped out all the whales. Um, in of the world, and um, how the government um placed quotas on on um beluga whales, how many we can hunt per village, 
um, just the control that they had and um, the the foxes um, are there because um, the Hudson's Bay bought fox furs from Inuit and completely took advantage of them um, where they would pay them very little, very little for like hundreds of pelts. Um, and yeah, they made and the, a lot of money. Yeah, and the they made Hudson a lot of Bay money. The company was built on... Uh, yeah, Inuits, like basically slavery. Mm -hmm. Slavery. Mm -hmm. um, Who's alive and well and thriving still now mm -hmm. off of all those fur pelts that were basically... Uh, yeah, it's old money probably. Mm -hmm. Like people are still alive from old money from... Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, and they took advantage of women. They impregnated Inuit women and there's a lot, a lot of people who were born from um from Hudson's Bay employees mm -hmm. so there's a lot of uh half um, Inuit like me yeah mm -hmm. your grandmother no yeah. my my father was a Hudson's Bay oh right mm -hmm. yeah um <coughs> they call them bay boys yeah the bay boys <coughs> yeah mm -hmm. so there's Two kids. My mother was left with two kids, and um, he left. Well, he left, and then started another family, and came back and lived in the north. So he's still living in the north, but he left us. <coughs> yeah. So like so many. Yeah. So so so, so, many, so many bay boys, and it's uh, many generations yeah. now. It's not. Yeah. Like it, it was uh, a generation above me, under me, and still, still, yeah. you know, these construction workers come up and they get into these short little relationships with the women. Yeah, yeah, that's an ongoing issue, uh, not just with Hudson's Bay, but white men coming to the north, living kind of like double lives. Mm -hmm. <coughs> but yeah, my grandmother too. That's mm -hmm. true. Yeah. Yeah. She was uh yep. Yeah. Yep, that's so true. Yeah. Her mo her father was white. Yeah, her father was uh Norwegian. That's why we're so pale. Um my grandmother her father uh, was he came with the Hudson's Bay too and uh, got her uh, her mother pregnant. And a few other women pregnant and left. And my grandmother was adopted to, thankfully, uh, another family that could take care of her. And yeah. Yeah, because um, illegitimate children were frowned upon mm -hmm. very mm -hmm. much, mm -hmm. especially when they're white, mm -hmm. when they're part white. <clears throat> I know my grandmother really struggled with that uh, mm -hmm. growing up because she looked so white. Yeah. Blue eyes, hey? Mm -hmm. Very, very light eyes. Yeah. Fascinating to <laughs> see what Hudson Bay represents mm -hmm. from the north looking mm -hmm. down. And so those colors are, um, it's just, that's that's instantly what pe people think of you know when they see those colors it's also um it's also the colors that were traded like when they used to trade things like yarn and threads mm -hmm. and um wool yeah they were all in those, those colors. colors so deliberately yeah so our traditional um nasak men's hats or uh, bias tape on our parkas. parkas have always been those colors. So even m myself, I find myself make when I make things, I'm really drawn to that um, color combo as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was it was sort of a brainwash. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Systemic. Mm -hmm. It was all part of a plan. Like mm. people didn't probably didn't even know that purple existed. You yeah. Know? Mm. I mean, unless you see fire weed. 
flowers. So those are purple. Yeah, fire in the north. Flowers. Yeah, her hair is the mm-hmm. color of fireweed. They're called fireweed. They're one of the few Arctic flowers that we see bloom in August. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Vaporwave. Vaporwave. <laughs> the foxes, the story of the trading of the fox furs mm-hmm. is also interesting because. Canada, this company that played such a big part in this nation's history, this company is based around trading fur, mm-hmm. right? And yeah. buying buying these furs at ridiculously low prices. Mm-hmm. But then if we talk about we're, we're we're moving into the world of animals today, seals are still um, an abundant species in the wild in the north. Yeah. And still a very much an important part of life oh, yes. and sustenance. Very much. And yet, for some reason, which we can get into and explore, the, the, the trade in seal products, which would be uh, an essential good for, for the Inuit, for yeah. Inuit, has been banned mm-hmm. in much of the world. Yeah, yeah. So we have this country that's founded on, let's trade for your furs, and now... We say you you can't sell your yeah. your goods. This um, if you have a chance to, I recommend watching a film called Angry Inuk. I don't know if you've seen it before. Uh, Alethea Arnakuk Baril. Yes. yes, beautiful film. Yes, mm-hmm. an She's important a, film. Yes, talks about talks about how the the ban of uh, seal skin has immensely affected Inuit mm-hmm. in the in the Canadian Arctic, um, where it's already um there's poverty, but then that ban on seal skin has immensely made it worse um for Inuit. Um we we eat and we hunt, we eat, we wear seal. Uh, to this day it's uh part of who we are um and it will always be a part of us we're never going to stop eating our food and sewing seal skin it's part of who we are it's mm-hmm. um we're alive because of it and there is so much misunderstanding and ignorance about that um around the world um even like in montreal if like some people will actually um, attack you, attack you, and say and like shout nasty things on the street because you're wearing fur. It's uh, it's but so it's ignorant. ignorant. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's ignorant. ignorance. You know, <clears throat> well, of course, there's uh, some of this comes from somewhere, but not from us. You know. No, no. Our core values are to respect the animals, mm-hmm. and um, and that's what they don't understand. It's one of the things that's hard for people to understand in urban environments today. Mm-hmm. That that it's possible to love animals and care about them and respect them, but also kill them and hunt them and eat them. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. that's an interesting duality that Inuit have always mm-hmm. lived by, understood, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And there's like in our, there's belief systems in our culture where animals actually give themselves to us so we can live. And... There's practices where, like, if you if you hunt a seal, you take a drink of water and you you share it with the seal, like you pour it back in, into its mouth to say thank you and this is your drink for your journey to the spirit world. world. <coughs> yeah, so. That's how we survived um, for millennia. And that 
we're all kind of taking a turn that at at any rebirth we could be an animal as well you know so to to live our life today respecting the animals and hope that they when they have their turn as us they will respect us too you know yeah it's this circle of life yeah but also spirituality and Mm -hmm. you know we're like a lot of our myths are are the animals are half human half yeah there's a lot of transform transformation so it's we're all one Mm -hmm. you know yeah and we even we even (coughs) have names um for people i mean people are named after animals Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like um although this is mohawk my my family name deer um was actually in mohawk um deer in mohawk i unfortunately can't remember what that word was but mm-hmm. um that's an example and there's people named ihaluk mm-hmm. kanayuk mm-hmm. um natsik um utjualuk these are all um animals so Panok. my yeah. sister's name is hopanok bird yeah mm. so we have nothing but respect for our animals mm-hmm. and they're a huge in, they're they're a huge inspiration for us a respect uh, but also a practicality you know it, being vegan on the arctic is not possible is not possible <laughs> you would die you would die yeah. What you can't eat the the plants that no. grow in February up there? No, <laughs> <laughs> above Adam, the tree line. Listen, <laughs> what, so you don't like spinach. <laughs> it's this. It's this strain. Uh, it's this uh, solid balance. Like there's just it's black and white for us. You know, like there there's no way around. There's no way around it. You know you. You have to respect, you have to, and you have to be a meat eater. Yeah. That's just the way it is. Do you want to try? Ooh. I'm I'm open to it. (laughs) Mike, can you get us? We shouldn't have ate before that. That's uh, my black bag. With uh, beluga. The dip of choice is... Is that soy sauce? Soy sauce. Kinkumen soy sauce. And aromat, which is hard to find in Canada because... MSG. <laughs> it's MSG. <laughs> <laughs> and also known in Inut- Inutitut as matatuti, which means uh, to eat beluga with. Mat, wow. uh, beluga skin with matak is beluga skin but it's interesting you see this is the type of food that the that was flown in like this is the type of this is what we made do with so these kind of seasonings <laughs> <laughs> tasty delight pregnant <laughs> cravings yes <laughs> now this is interesting whether you're pregnant or not because I, I have eaten muktuk before, but I was not given any seasonings with it. Oh, this is going to so be a new experience. It was just frozen and unseasoned. Okay. And, and eating on cardboard boxes is the traditional way it's done. Well, you, yeah. have, to, you have to realize that... Um, a lot of what we did or do was about making do with what you had. You know, people don't have uh, fancy china in the in the Arctic. They didn't have that. No. Um, Some we lived not in even igloos. tables. Yeah, not even a table. Not me personally, but mm-hmm. my mother grew up in igloos, mm-hmm. so igloos were used until uh, the 1960s. Mm-hmm. So there were no tables before colonization and if we talk about igloos in the 1960s it's because 
nomadism, nomadic lifestyle was still very much the way Inuit lived, right? And we were still very isolated, you know. Uh, there was no white people around. And I have this cute story about, uh, or it's, I don't know if it's cute, but from that, we, for my business. Also do a, or do I not do it? No, one at a time. <laughs> one at a time? Yeah, one at a time. Okay. So straight. Yeah. Well, that you're going to like that if you're. That's aromat. One Frozen. Mm hmm. Yeah. But right, delicious, delicious. Right up. Because when you're fishing, Isn't the fish aromat? instantly yeah. freezes when you catch it. Mm. The winter time. Mm -hmm. Like this is naturally, it grows naturally, mm -hmm. so it it's very fresh. Mm. It does taste very fresh. Uh, There's a whole technique to how she'll cut it. You'll see because it's very tough skin, so. It's cut into tiny little squares so that you have a better chance at chewing it. I like how you say a chance at chewing it because mm -hmm. you might not be able to <laughs> actually. Well, can you chew imagine it? taking a? <laughs> can you it's imagine tough. taking a bite out of that like just solid as it is? It would be impossible. Be like biting that like it would leather be like, or like a uh, tire. Yeah, like biting a tire. But if you put little <laughs> squares in a tire. So You'd here. have a better chance at chewing. Oh my god, it's so good! <laughs> it's so hard to chew. Mm -hmm. Like <clears throat> that's why it's so necessary to put those little slits in it. Mm. Mm -hmm. Like a lot. It's like the. It's like it goes. It's a lingering bite. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do belugas swim in pods? Yes, mm -hmm. they do. Wow. So Huaktak is uh, located right in the migration path of the beluga. So we're a beluga hunting community. Community. Um, there are two hunting seasons. Um, in June and October, around that season. <clears throat> so, yeah, I have a napkin. I'll show you. So, yeah, um, the quota was finally lifted after 25 years in my village so in Kwakta. yes they were only able to hunt 20 to 23 beluga per year for which 25 years which is nothing for the for the community and that created a lot of um it had negative impacts on our people Mm -hmm. Um, where conflict, yeah, lots of conflict. Um, people started um, not wanting to share. I was their gonna catch. say that's one of the most important things mm -hmm. for hunters mm -hmm. in the north is sharing, right? Yeah, yeah, it's our core value. But this quota created conflict where people didn't want to share anymore. Um, there wasn't enough to be shared. Yeah. I mean, before, when I was growing up, we would get, like, unlimited amounts of beluga, meat and skin. But with the quota, we would only get, like, small strips per household. So, um... And this is organic meat not flown in thousands mm -hmm. of miles from the south, you know, it just, it's crazy. It's And it also goes back to the topic that we were talking about earlier, about scientists uh, yeah, thinking they know more yeah. than the people who have lived there mm -hmm. and survived there mm -hmm. and thrived there for hundreds of years. You know, like it was these scientists who came in and said, no, no more, the belugas are dying. Yeah, they're and endangered <clears throat> when they were not. Created such chaos in the communities. It it was making people be forced to be greedy when that mm -hmm. is not who we are as a people. Um, 
resentment. Mm -hmm. Um, Also, uh, children growing up not having the abundance that their parents might have had before. And, you know, it's, again, it's organic meat. It's um, the most natural form. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they missed out on that. Yeah. But it's lifted now. Yeah. Recently. Yeah. So you should have seen all the carcasses. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. A lot of them. <laughs> yeah. I'm an animal lover, I swear. Yeah. So ha- so happy for that though. Yeah. So where did this particular cut of beluga <laughs> It came from um my my niece. My niece uh, and her family hunt beluga, so they gave me some. Yeah, my yeah kids as young as eleven catch whales, and these are hard to kill. Mm-hmm. You have to know precisely where to. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna look at the skin. Shoot it. Uh, it's a large animal. It's a large mammal, so you have to be very skilled, and. They're great hunters. I'm so proud of them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And this fish comes from Gangyeok-suk. And Gangyeok-suk is one of the Arctic char capitals. The world. Of the world. Mm-hmm. Delicious. Yes, delicious. I think that, you know, as a person who did not grow up eating beluga, obviously I, lo- I lost out. I missed out. Mm-hmm. But Arctic char is is easier for us to understand the texture mm-hmm. and the yeah. flavor. Mm-hmm. The 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 beluga is an acquired mm-hmm. yeah. texture. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I've been eating that since I was a baby. So And you, it's been the same piece, right? Cuz it's so tough. <laughs> <laughs> I just got that. <laughs> I'm still working on it over here. <laughs> uh, good one, Adam. Good one. Does beluga make you shit? Probably um, not. You'll see. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> Probably <laughs> not. There we go. <laughs> uh, it's uh, it's if it if you're not used to eating this, this yeah, it's raw, fat. frozen. I mean, the fat, fat you know, yeah. like the fat makes me feel like uh, it's gonna be. But it's not a bad mm-hmm. fat. It's not like a trans fat. It's not. No. It's not the same kind of fat. No. Um, the fat is also rendered and mm-hmm. um, fermented, fermented down. Hmm. And the it used used to be used for um to light hulluks, the traditional lamps, oil lamps. That kept kept the igloos warm. Mm-hmm. Source of light. The flavor of the beluga is mild. Yeah, it's very mild. And it's pleasant and it's mm-hmm. pleasurable. Mm-hmm. What's so different to us the is the texture mm-hmm. yeah right yeah do we have can you think of any texture that approximates this in calamari yeah but what but is there that level of crunch on calamari no no the chewy. no the chewiness the chewiness mm-hmm. of a calamari with the crunch of mm. a rock <laughs> <laughs> no what else has that kind of crunch you know, i uh, no, it's, it's gristle. It's like it's like yeah, um, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. gristle. Yeah, you know, it's like the it's like when you bite into the bone of like a chicken. chicken. You know, yeah. like right. the chicken, chicken bone, the chicken right. tendon. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah, yeah, maybe chicken tendon is accurate. Also, a little bit like you know, sometimes when you get a popcorn that's not fully popped mm, and there's okay. a bit of the kernel mm. in there as well. Mm-hmm. No, you know mm. what I'm talking about? Yep. Yeah, yeah, I know yeah. What you're yeah. Talking about. Like it's a little bit like. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, Adam. Um, when you were up in the north, did you get a translation of your name or an Inuk version of your name? I don't think so. No? Mm. No. So, Adam, in Inuktitut, you, you're, you're called Atami. Atami. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hmm. So, you're now Atami. 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 And you say, ah. Uh. Delo? Uh. Atami. Ah. That's Perfect. like saying, "Hi, Adam," uh, and then you're you're acknowledging. Uh, yeah, you're saying yeah. yes. Yes, <coughs> indeed. Mm-hmm. That's beautiful. Yeah. Uh, uh, 
All right. So we are at the end of our our podcast. I'd like to thank you, Adam Atami, very oh. much for sitting in with us and uh, I really enjoyed your company. Me too. Mm-hmm. It was super a pleasure. Fun. It was super, a pleasure. super fun. And our next uh, mission is to make pregnant cravings a reality. Yeah. As entrepreneurs, <laughs> mm-hmm. we are all going or to be... Or well, we can start with the recipes at least. Yes. Um, <laughs> we'll test them. I feel like there's one last thing that we maybe can squeeze in. Okay. Which we haven't spoken about, but it's Tanya's love <laughs> of animals. Oh no, would we like to? Would we like to talk about it? Because I think it's important. Oh, I'll have my time. I think I don't know. I mean, you. I can't talk about it without really talking about it so <laughs> it needs more time yeah, I need more it's time. another podcast <laughs> yeah well i've done ask mike for my own pad- podcast <laughs> and to write a book <laughs> so like and half of those would be about you know, my love of cats yeah but yes i love cats i love animals they call her the cat lady People say she's crazy just because she has a few dozen cats. But can anyone who loves animals that much really be crazy? <laughs> nope. The old you. That's my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's mm-hmm. another topic for another time. To be continued. To be be continued. continued. Mm -hmm. You have to come back, Atami. I can't wait. Thank you so much for having me both. So fun. Yeah, Mike and Jeremy.